Well, hello and welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this video, we're going to work a few practice problems having to do with limiting reactants. So if you haven't yet watched the lesson on limiting reactants, I encourage you to do that first. You may also want to download the accompanying PDF worksheet so you can try these problems on your own. You can find that worksheet at GetChemistryHelp.com or in the description for this video. So let's go ahead and read this problem and try it out. So it says, what mass in grams of aluminum hydroxide could be made from 30.00 grams of aluminum sulfide and 20.00 grams of water? So we want to know what mass in grams of aluminum hydroxide. So our goal is to find the mass in grams of this product. And we have 30.00 grams of aluminum sulfide and 20.00 grams of water. So we have two different reactants, so we know it's going to be a limiting reactant problem. So we essentially have to do two different calculations. We need to turn 30 grams of aluminum sulfide into grams of aluminum hydroxide, and we need to turn 20 grams of water into grams of aluminum hydroxide. So let's go ahead and try that now. So for the first one, we've got 30.00 grams of aluminum sulfide. Now, whenever we have mass, we know we need to convert that into moles because moles is the way that we can connect different reagents in a chemical reaction. So we have mass of aluminum sulfide. So we'll turn that into moles using the molar mass. So you can go in your product table and add up two aluminums and three sulfurs. And you'll find that that has a mass of 150.17 grams per mole of aluminum sulfide. So now we're in moles of aluminum sulfide, and we want to be in moles of aluminum hydroxide. So we can find the connection through that mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So for every one mole of aluminum sulfide, we produce two moles of aluminum hydroxide. So we'll put that in here as the next step. So for every one mole of aluminum sulfide, we produce two moles of aluminum hydroxide. Now again, we have moles of aluminum hydroxide, but we want mass. So we know to go from moles to mass, we use the molar mass. So once again, you go back to your periodic table, you add up one aluminum, three oxygens, three hydroxides, and that has a mass of 78.01 grams per one mole of aluminum hydroxide. So cancel out our moles here and we Punch that into our calculators, and we want to check our significant digits here. So we have four significant digits here, five here. The mole-to-mole -mole ratio, this is always exact. This is not a measurement or an approximation, and this is four. So the fewest is four. So our answer is going to have four. So it's 31.17 grams of aluminum hydroxide. So that's how much we can make from 30 grams of aluminum sulfide. So now we're going to do it again for the second reagent here, 20.00 grams of water. So 20.00 grams of water. So once again, we have mass. So we need to go to moles. So we do that through molar mass. So you add up two hydrogens and one oxygen, and we get 18.02 grams is the mass of a mole of water. Now we're in moles of water, and I want to connect that to moles of aluminum hydroxide. So again, we use the mole-to-mole -mole ratio from the coefficients here. So for every six moles of water, we produce two moles of aluminum hydroxide. So for every six moles of water, we produce two moles of aluminum hydroxide. And then once, one more time, we have moles of aluminum hydroxide, and we want to be in grams, so we use molar mass. Same molar mass as on the first part, 78.01 grams is a mole of aluminum hydroxide. So we'll put that into our calculators. Again, we'll check our significant digits. We got 4, 4, exact, and 4, so it must be 4. And I got 28.86 grams 
of aluminum hydroxide. So now the question is, well, how much aluminum hydroxide could you make? Is it 31.17? Is it 28.86? Or maybe you add them together. Well, of course, the answer is always going to be whatever is the smallest amount. So 28.86, that's how much aluminum hydroxide you can make. So that tells us then that our limiting reactant was the water right here. This was the one that was limiting us to only making 28.86 grams of the product. There was enough aluminum sulfide, of course, to keep on going and make up to 31.17. So the water is the one that ran out and it limited us to only this amount. So that means the aluminum sulfide is the excess reactant. Okay, let's try another one. What mass in grams of tetraphosphorus hexaoxide could be made from 8.75 grams of phosphorus and 12.50 grams of oxygen. So let's go ahead and label what we got. So 8.75 grams of phosphorus, 12.50 grams of oxygen. And our question is how many grams of this product? So once again, we have two different reactants. So we're going to, have to do a limiting reactant problem. So we're going to turn phosphorus into tetraphosphorus hexaoxide and oxygen into tetraphosphorus hexaoxide. Let's go ahead and do that twice again. So 8.75 grams of phosphorus. So we have the mass. So we need to turn that into moles. So we always use the molar mass, of course. So that's 123.88 grams is the mass of one mole of phosphorus. So now we're in moles of phosphorus, but I want to be in moles of tetraphosphorus hexaoxide. So this is a one to one ratio. So for every one mole of phosphorus, we make one mole of tetraphosphorus hexaoxide. And now we're in moles of tetraphosphorus hexaoxide and it want grams. So to go from moles to mass, we use molar mass. So you add those up on your periodic table, and I got 219.88 grams for every mole of P4O6. So we'll take 8.75 divided by 123.88 times 219.88. Check our significant digits. We have three here, five here, five here. So three is our fewest. So 15. 0.5 grams of tetraphosphorus hexaoxide. Okay, so how about the second reactant? 12.50 grams of oxygen. How much tetraphosphorus hexaoxide could that make? Well, let's try that one. So 12.50 grams of oxygen. Again, we have mass. Whenever we have mass, we know we need to use molar mass. So add up two oxygens on your periodic table, and it's 32.00 grams per mole O2. Make sure you do go ahead and write 32.00, not just 32, else it'll change your significant digits and your precision. So now we're in moles of oxygen, and we want to be in moles of tetraphosphorus hexaoxide. So now it's a 3 to 1 ratio. So for every 3 moles of oxygen, we can make 1 mole of tetraphosphorus hexaoxide. And one more time, we have moles, we want to go to mass. So use that same molar mass we found on the first part. 219.88 per every mole of P4O6. And let's check our significant digits. We have four, four, exact, and five. So it's going to be four this time. So 28.63 grams of tetraphosphorus hexaoxide. So again, what's the answer? How many grams of P4O6 could we make? Well, we're always going to pick whatever the smallest one is. So in our case, it's 15.5. Now the question doesn't ask this, but what if it said to identify the limiting reactant? In other words, which of these reactants limited us to only making 15.5? Well, again, it would be this one right here, the P4. So phosphorus is the limiting reactant, which means oxygen must be the excess reactant. Okay, let's try out one last one. 
what mass in grams of titanium four chloride could be made from 25.0 grams of titanium four oxide, 10 grams of carbon, and 40.0 grams of chlorine. Okay, so let's fill in what we know. So we have 25.0 grams of titanium four oxide. We have 10.0 grams of carbon and 40.0 grams of chlorine. And our question is, how many grams of titanium four chloride? So this time we have three reactants, but it's gonna work the exact same way. But instead of doing it twice, we'll do it three times. So we'll turn the titanium four oxide into titanium four chloride. We'll turn the carbon into titanium four chloride and we'll turn the chlorine into titanium four chloride. Okay, so let's just go ahead and work our way through this. So the first one, 25.0 grams TiO2. So we're in mass, so we'll use molar mass. So go to your periodic table, add up a titanium and two oxygens, and you'll find 79.88 grams is a mole of TiO2. So now we're in moles of titanium four oxide, but again, we wanna be in titanium four chloride, so it's a three to three mole ratio. So for every three moles of TiO2, put that on the bottom so it will cancel, we produce three moles of TiCl4. Now we're in moles of TiCl4, but we wanna be in grams, so again, we need to use the molar mass. So add up a titanium, four chlorines, you get 189.68 grams per mole of TiCl4. So now we'll punch that into our calculators. 25.0 divided by 79.88 times three divided by three times 189.68 Check our significant digits. So it looks like we have three here, four here. These are both exact and five. So three is the fewest. So it would be 59.4 grams of titanium four chloride. So that's the mass we can make from 25.0 grams of titanium four oxide. Okay, how about the 10.0 grams of carbon? Let's try that one out. So 10.0 grams of carbon. We're in mass of carbon, so we need to go to moles. So 12.01 grams is the molar mass of carbon. Now we're in moles of carbon, but I wanna be in moles of titanium four chloride, so that's a four to three mole ratio. So for every four moles of carbon, I can make three moles of titanium four chloride. And then we're in moles, we need to go to mass. So one more time, molar mass is 189.68 grams per mole TiCl4. So we'll put that in our calculators, 10.0 divided by 12.01 times three divided by four times 189.68. Check our significant digits, three, four, exact, and five, so three again. So 118 grams of TiCl4. And then our last one, how about the 40.0 grams of chlorine? So 40.0 grams of chlorine. So we have mass, we know we gotta use molar mass, so we'll add up two chlorines, and that's 70.90 grams per mole of chlorine. And now we need to relate chlorine to titanium four chloride, so that's a six to three mole ratio. So for every six moles of chlorine, we produce three moles of titanium four chloride. And notice that number never changes, it's always three moles, three moles, three moles. And then the last step also never changes. It's always the molar mass of TiCl4 every time. So 189.68 grams per mole of TiCl4.
So we'll put that in our calculator, 40.0 divided by 70.90 times three divided by six times 189.68. We have three significant digits, four, these are exact and five, so three again. So 53.5 grams of TiCl4. So how much could we make? If we mix together these three reactants in these amounts, how many grams would you make? Well, again, we always pick the smallest one. So it'd be 53.5. So that means that our limiting reactant is chlorine. And in this case, there are actually two different excess reactants. Both the titanium four oxide and carbon are excess reactants because only one of the three can actually limit us. So this one runs out and that means we still have a little bit of extra carbon and titanium four oxide left. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on limiting reactants. If you did, be sure and hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video. You can also visit me over on my website, getchemistryhelp.com, where you'll find even more helpful videos and practice worksheets. Have a great day.